Hey friends, welcome to my kitchen. This is Sarah here. We harvested these beets earlier today and now we are going to get them ready to store them for winter. So, real easy. Let me just bring it in here. There we go. All right, so this is a massive beet harvest for me. Um, I have never grown this many beets. We want to remove as much of the greens as we can. We want to come down as far as we can on them. And we're just going to keep them in this box and keep them in our basement. Um, the cooler the temperature, the better, the better off these will be and the longer they will store. Um, we don't want them to get too warm. I don't have an actual root cellar, but my basement does stay fairly cool and uh, higher humidity is good and ideal for beets. So I'm going to just cut these tops off. I'm going to try to kind of organize them by size also as I stick them in this box. I've just got it lined with a bit of cardboard on the bottom and it's a wooden box with slats so they can, they can get some airflow. Um, I'm not sure how long exactly these are going to store down there. Um, I will probably, as time goes and winter progresses, I will probably start to preserve them in some different manner, in a, in a different manner, um, just as I have time. But for now, this will do just fine. We don't want to wash the beets off before storing this. We don't want to introduce wet like that or they could rot and we do not want that at all. If we were to leave the tops on, the green tops on, um, it would, the tops would start to pull the moisture out of the beets and we could get some cracking and we don't want that. I think this is our largest beet. <laughs> Look at that. Now, the larger the beets are, the more fibrous and kind of woody they can get. Um, so I don't, I don't really like the huge, I, I don't like our beets to be huge. Um, I prefer them to be smaller. And these tops, you can eat these. Um, we do not have to throw these out, especially if they look good. Like the, these greens look really good. So I could cut these off and put them in the fridge and eat them in the next few days. You can use them anywhere, you know, where you would use kale or spinach. And so I think um, I'm going to keep some of these greens and the rest of them are going to go to the chickens. If we were growing these um, earlier in the season and we were harvesting from them through summer, you could um, use the leaves, you know, pluck a few leaves here and there and uh, allow them to continue growing. That would be more ideal than just, you know, a large harvest at the end of the season and you've got, you know, all these tops. <laughs> so, just gonna brush the dirt off these. And continue 
cutting these tacks. It'll be interesting to see how many pounds of beets we grow. You can kind of see on this one, it's got the red and the white stripes. This is the uh, Chioga uh, beet. It is an heirloom beet from the 1840s. And um, I thought those looked fun. So I ordered those earlier this year. Um, I, I think I got them off of Etsy actually. And I can uh, put a link down below in the description box. Uh, Southern, Southern Seed, Southern Seed Exchange. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I'll put it down below if you're interested in checking them out. They had a lot of uh, nice seeds, heirloom seeds. Um, and so far what I grew from them, I'm really happy with. I bought um, lemon basil, the beets. Um, we also have the Detroit red beets that I also purchased from them. That's in this mix. Those are the two varieties that we bought and grew. Um, I also bought an heirloom sugar pea. Those were phenomenal. So I think I will be buying from them again. It'll be interesting to see how well these store in this way. Um, I don't, again, I don't have a root cellar. I do have a basement though, and it is significantly cooler down there than it is in the rest of my home. Um, and I can, I have some, um, uh, what's the word? some influence to the moisture level in the basement. Um, I have a designated area that is not finished off for my root crops. And so far, everything that I have stored down there has stored fairly well. I'm very pleased. We actually have a pumpkin that we were able to store for an entire year and it's still fine. Now, you could also um, put these in a box and if you have a garage or a shed that doesn't freeze, uh, you could put them in there. Our garage is not suitable for storage of food at all. So we will not be doing that. But um, these beets can actually, um, these beets can actually fare well down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we get cooler than that here, so we do not leave them in the ground. If you live in an area where your temperatures don't get that low, you could potentially, and, and where you don't have a freeze, where the ground doesn't freeze, you could potentially leave these in the ground over winter. Now here in Wisconsin, that is, that, that's not possible. <laughs> Our winters are too harsh for that. I've also started to look into seeing about if it's possible to do some kind of alternative root cellar. Like, is there a possibility or potential where you could maybe have a cooler or something outside, you know, whether it's above ground and you help to 
insulate it around the outside of it to keep it from freezing inside or burying it into the ground. Is there alternate methods to being able to have long-term food storage for things like root crops over winter in this climate? So I may just try and experiment over winter with some of these beets. I wouldn't want to um, use my entire harvest by any means, but I may attempt to see if a method like that would work or is doable in this area with part of this, just to see, you know, what happens. I like to do experiments every year, every growing season. I like to experiment and see, you know, if there's, what can I do that's different? Is there an alternative to this? Will this work? Will I have a better outcome if I try this or that? Um, and try to do at least one or two experiments every growing season. And I mean, hey, why not try it with the harvest season? as well. I mean, if you think about it, somebody had to learn this at some point. You know, somebody someday found out, hey, if I store my root vegetables in this temperature, they will last all winter. You know, so it'd be interesting to see. All these little teeny tiny ones, I think we will probably cook these up fairly quickly. See how much we got. Okay. I'm gonna put our basket on. Tear. Let's see. Just what we got here. All right, not too bad. Four pounds, three ounces. Look at that, friends. I think I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, four pounds, three ounces, not too bad. <laughs> we'll find some good use for those. And we will surely enjoy those. And I'm going to kind of go through some of these greens as well and uh, maybe take some out, put them in the fridge for some sandwiches later on this week. Charming. He's whining to go outside. And uh, probably give the rest to the chickens and then the rest will go in the compost. Um, yeah. Thanks guys for coming along today. Until next time, see ya.